Yeah. He can hear the interpreter, Your Honor. Good, thank you. Okay, so please tell me your name. Joan Jimenez. Joan Jimenez. This is case number 20, CF 9937. You were arrested for battery by strangulation, domestic violence, and battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not... Okay. Is she here for Mr. Medina? Ma'am, do you speak English? Spanish. I don't know Spanish. I speak English. Puede contestar en español, señora. Okay. Yo quisiera hablar con el con el 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 juez con la jueza. I would like to speak to the judge. Yes, ma'am. I'm the judge. A uh, madam sí, interpreter. Señora. Thank you for interpreting for her. Ella es la jueza, señora. Oh, hola. Hi. Good morning, ma'am. Tell me your name, please. Ilu Betancourt de Jimenez. Ilu Betancourt de Jimenez. All right, ma'am, do you want to have contact with your husband? Señora, ¿usted quiere poder tener contacto con su esposo? Sí. Yes. <laughs> Are you afraid of him? Eh, ¿Usted le tiene temor a él? No. No. Ma'am, how long have you been married? Señora, ¿cuánto tiempo llevan de casados? 11 años. 11 years. Have there been any other instances of violence between the two of you during the course of your marriage? ¿Ha habido algún otro incidente de violencia durante su matrimonio, señora? Nunca. Never. Do you have any concerns about your son's safety if I were to allow contact between, I'm sorry, your daughter's safety if I were to allow contact between the two of you? ¿Usted tiene alguna preocupación por su hija si yo permitiera contacto entre ustedes dos? No. Yo quiero que él tenga contacto con mis hijos. Mi hijo tiene autismo y está muy mal. I él depende de él. With my children, my son is autistic and he's not doing well at all. He depends uh, on, on his father. Okay. Uh, Ms. Fusco, do you have any questions for the witness? Él es un buen papá, excelente papá. He's a good father, excellent father. Ma'am, you would call 911 if something else did happen? ¿Usted llamaría al 911 si algo volviera a ocurrir? Sí. Nothing yes. further, Your Honor. All right. There's no questions from the defense, Your Honor. Yo no temo por él, él es una buena persona, yo no sé qué. ¿Qué está I'm pasando de verdad? Yo quiero person. que él esté bien. Él es el papá de mi hijo. Mi hijo tiene autismo y no durmió. Esto va a ser peor. Uh, un momento, señora. Uh, he is a good father. I don't know what happened. Uh, my son didn't sleep. This is just going to get worse. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Sir, you are not to have any contact. I'm sorry, you're not to have any hostile contact with your wife. Do you understand what that means? Sí. Yes. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. I am going to place you on pretrial release, and I do need to inform you that you have an immigration hold as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Interpreter, would you explain to the witness that um, she is going to be able to see her husband once he's released and that there's to be yes. no hostile contact? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Señora. Usted va a poder ver a su esposo cuando él salga, eh, pero no puede tener ningún contacto hostil él con usted. ¿Entendido? Él, él va a quedar en libertad preventiva, pero él tiene una orden de detención de inmigración también. Pero usted va a poder tener contacto con él cuando él salga. Pero es que el niño necesita estar con él. Mi hijo tiene autismo. Ahorita está pasando por un problema de déficit de atención y él le tiene y tenemos una tutora que lo ayuda. Y el niño sí. está muy mal. Yo necesito que él pueda tener contacto con nosotros. Yo no temo por nosotros. Yo sé que esto no va a volver a pasar. Uh, I need him to be able to uh, come out and see my son. My son is suffering right now uh, from attention deficit. He has a tutor assigned. He hasn't been able to sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm not afraid uh, for, uh, 
of him or anything. I know this will not happen again. Okay. Nosotros nos vinimos para este país como familia Señora, gracias. Eso por la bien. condición de mi hijo, porque él necesita una ayuda. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Sí, gracias. Eso es todo, señora. Thank you. Se puede retirar. Gracias. Oh, Madam Interpreter, that's the only case we have this morning. Okay, Your Honor. You're Thank welcome. you. <laughs> Sir, good morning. Your name? Charlie Bernard Boston, ma'am. Mr. Bostic, this is 20 CF 9925. You were arrested for battery by strangulation, domestic violence, and resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Your bond on count one will be $2,500. Your bond on count two is $100. I am revoking the bonds in 20 CF 8805 and 20 CF 8592. Those will be set at none. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Your name? Christopher Handy. Mr. Handy, this is 20 CF 9895. You were arrested for aggravated battery and a pregnant person and child abuse. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with either of the victims. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms, sir. Do you have any questions about the no contact order? No, ma'am. Bond on count one is 2,500. Bond on count two will be 150. Thank you. Mr. Blankner, good morning. I was told that your uh, client, Mr. Blankner, Mr. Blankner, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? Good, thank you. Your um, client is in medical and won't be brought to court. So we can't do it today. So I would just suggest, I don't know that Judge Rex either. Say that one more time. He will not be brought to court today. And then I, so I said I would just suggest posting the bond at this point that Judge Rex Seidler set. Because I think, you know, yesterday he was good to go, and then this morning we get here and he can't be brought. So. Well, whatever you all want to do, we'll do it. Okay. Well, you'll have to set it in Seminole County because he'll be out. Say one more time. Set it in Seminole County? So, Judge, do you want to come closer so you can hear me yeah. better? Okay. Um, Judge Rex Seidler set a bond for him yesterday. Okay. So what happens is he keeps getting put back into medical. Fifteen hundred, and then set it in Seminole. Then he's for an out of custody. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. How do I get out? Thank you, Rob. You're welcome. Have a great day. Have a nice day. Right. Sir, good morning. Your name? Anthony John Lewis. Mr. Lewis, sir, you're here in 20 CF 9371. I'm sorry, 9317. You were arrested for battery by strangulation, domestic violence, and battery domestic violence. This was pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Did you have any questions about the no contact order, sir? Uh, no, ma'am, not really. Okay. Your bond on count one is going to be $1,500. Your bond on count two will be $100. Thank yes, you. You're welcome. What else? Yeah. Medical? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's 20 CF 9912, Raheem McGee. Mr. Matos, would you like to waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I will appoint the public defender to 
represent him. He was arrested for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, domestic violence. There's probable cause. He's not to have any contact with the victim. He's to maintain a separate residence. He may have a one-time return with law enforcement to get his things if needed. Did I say no weapons? No. He's not to possess any weapons or firearms, and I will place him on pretrial release at this time. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Uh, Ms. Woods, Brittany Woods. Ms. Woods, you are here in 20 CF 9944. You were arrested for nine counts of possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, aggravated assault with a firearm, possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, and battery domestic violence. Right, and I'm actually the one that got hit. I don't understand that. Okay, this. so ma'am, well... You'll have to talk to your lawyer about that, ma'am. Okay, thank you. There is probable cause for the offenses. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is $150. I'm going to ROR you on counts two through nine. Thank you, ma'am. Bond, bond I on- I have a firearm. I'm sorry. Ma'am, you can't interrupt me, okay? If you have a question at the end, you can ask me, but I, there's some things I need to tell you, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, count 10 bond is going to be 2,500, 11 bond will be 150, 12 bond will be 100. Ma'am, you are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or any firearms. Um, if you need to return one time with the police to get your things, you may. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to take any action on the out on bond case. Okay, thank you. So I can get out today? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. What do I talk? Thank you. Sir, good morning. Your name? Jonathan uh, Patrick Black. Mr. Black, you are here in 20MM6002. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Ashley Black. Ms. Black, do you want to have contact with your husband? That's not my husband. That's not my wife. Uh, oh, sorry. That's my uncle. I'm sorry, your brother. Do you want to have contact with him? My uncle. No, I would not. No? No. Okay, thank you. Sir, you're not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with law enforcement to get your things if necessary. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Your bond is $500, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, your name? Good morning, Austin Coble. Mr. Coble, this is 20MM5989. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning, ma'am. Tell me your name, please. Teresa Coble. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to have you speak louder and into the microphone. Teresa Coble. Ms. Coble, do you wanna have contact with your son? Yes. Are you afraid of him? No. I see you're very upset and you're hesitating on your answers. Is there something you'd like to share with the court? I, he just needs help. He needs counseling. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ms. Ma um, Fusco, do you have any questions for the witness? Um, Yes, ma'am. Has anything like this happened before? Okay. Yes, occasionally. And is he able to stay with his father? He is, but that's, it's a, it's a cycle that needs to be broken. And that's what he's seen growing up and why we've divorced and why this is escalated to this point, I think. There hasn't been any discipline. Nothing further, Your Honor. 
No questions from the defense. Right. Mr. Coble, you're not to have any contact with your mom. You're to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms, sir. Yes, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, your name? Morning. Tell me your name, ma'am. Brenda Cruz. Ms. Cruz, excuse me, this is 20MM5986. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, your name? Catherine Rodriguez Deloach. Ms. Deloach, this is 20MM6000. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. And you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Your name? Gordon Grandison. What's your name? Gordon Grandison. Mr. Granderson, this is 20MM700. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I will place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions, Mr. Granderson? No, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Kareem Gums. Mr. Gums, this is 20MM5994. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. But I stay in Miami, man. Okay, that's fine. You need to make sure you're back in Orange County for court if the state of Florida files charges, okay? Your bond is $500. No, no uh, pre-trial. Does he qualify for a pre-trial, Mr. Gums? Huh? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Gums, I will place you on pre-trial release at this time. Okay. Listen very closely to me, though. Make sure you're back in Orange County. Otherwise, there'll be a warrant issued for your arrest. Back in, uh, but y'all going to send the um, court date to my address in Miami, right? Well, you need to make sure that you get in contact with your lawyer at the public defender's office and make sure that pretrial release has your correct address. That way you get notice of all of your court dates. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good morning, Judge. So, Ma'am, good I'm, morning. I'm hot in hearing on my okay, right maybe side. That's okay. Listen, I think they can give you um, a headset. Ms. Hamlet, is that better? Yes. Good. Okay. You were here in 20MM6004. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning. 
Good morning, Your Honor. Tell me your name, please. My name is Lawrence Jackson. Uh, Mr. Jackson, do you want to have contact with Miss Hamlet? Yes. Are you afraid of her? No. Okay. Miss Fusco, did you have any questions for the witness? If something else happened, would you be willing to call 911? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just would like the verbal and the physical stuff to stop at home. Other than that, the relationship at home is pretty well. It's just the attacking part. I just. Mr. Jackson, I can't hear anything you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I said um, everything at home is pretty well. It's just as far as the verbal and the physical part. But other than that, um, I would like contact with her. It's just that I would like the. Uh, is it the no hostile thing you were saying? Yes. Yeah. So there's been an ongoing problem of physical violence? Um, it happened once before, but I'm not afraid of her. Like, when the, when the police came, I told the cops, like, if she could just stay home. But they said because of the situation, they had to. But um, her, do her daughter is my girlfriend, and we really would like her to come back home. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Matos, any questions? It's no questions, Your Honor. Ms. Hamlet, you are not to have any hostile contact with Mr. Jackson. Do you understand what that means? No, not really. Okay, so it means that you cannot act aggressive toward him in any way. You can't yell at him. You can't fight with him. Anything of that nature. Do you understand? Oh, yes. Okay. You can't possess any weapons or firearms, and I'm going to release you on your own recognizance at this time. Oh, thank you so much, Judge. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Would be um, cause her cell, her cell phone is at home. Okay. So um, she the only one with the uh, passcode. Is there a certain time release that uh we can pick? Like her daughter could come pick her up from somewhere. I don't know. She can call when she's released. It's a phone in the lobby. Okay. So she can call when she gets released. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. But I, excuse me, Judge. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I don't have my, my phone. I, I don't have my daughter's phone number. Oh, okay. Can you give me the phone number so we can get that yes. to her? It's, it's 301-563-5088. Okay. Okay. All right. 301-563-5088? Yes. Okay. What's her daughter's name? Lissette. Miss Hamlet, did you get that? 301 Five six three five zero eight eight. Yes, ma'am. She can come to free trial because that's a long distance Thank number, you. and we'll call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Just oh, Just McPrevlis. Mr. Prevalis, this is case number 20MM5998. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Do you have any questions about anything that I've ordered? Yes. Um... All right, first thing first is, that's my wife. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah, so she did move out the resident. Okay. So the problem is, um, I'm the prime care, primary caretaker for my child. Okay. And um, she's taking, she took my child somewhere, I don't know where my kid's at. And she okay. don't have no money, no nothing, so. So you will need to call the police about that. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And, um, okay, and then with pretrial diversion, how that works? It's pretrial release. So in, <clears throat> instead of paying money to get out of the jail today, you're going to be placed on that program. They're going to monitor you while you're in the community. And you'll have to phone in with them until your case is finished. And phone in with them? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. All right. Anything else? And also, I'm also a, a tax preparer. Did this okay. mess up my record or anything? Like, I can no longer... So those are all really good questions that you'll be able to talk with your lawyer about. Okay. 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 Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Sir. 
Sir, good morning. Your name? Jody Schrader. Mr. Schrader, this is case number 20MM699. You were arrested for battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Lynn Schrader. Ms. Schrader, did you want to have contact with your husband? Yes, I do. Are you afraid of him? No, not at all. Okay. How long have you been married? Almost 20 years. All right. And during your marriage, have there been any um, instances of violence between the two of you? No, never. All right. This was, he was drunk. Okay. It, it escalated. I understand. Ms. Fusco, did you have any questions? Nothing further, Your Honor. Nothing in defense, Your Honor. Mr. Schrader, I'm going to order that you are not to um, have any hostile contact with your wife. Do you understand what that means? Hostile contact? No hostile contact. You cannot yell at her. You cannot argue with her. You cannot disrespect her in any way. Okay. That's no problem. Okay. And um, you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. You're also not to possess or consume any alcohol or controlled substances without a valid prescription. Okay. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, ma'am. He'll be released later today. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Um, Jennifer. What's your last name, Jennifer? Sikora, S-I-K-O-R-A. Ma'am, you're here in 20MM6003. You were arrested for battery dating violence. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. <clears throat> you are not to have any contact with the victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with the police to get your things if needed. And you are not to possess any weapons or firearms. I'm also going to order that you are not to possess or consume any controlled substances or alcohol without a valid prescription. And I'll place you on pretrial release at this time. Okay. Do you have any questions, ma'am? Um, no, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Natasha Stewart. Reversal parade is medically your honor. Which one? Roberto Paredes. Oh, okay. That's 20 CT 5042 and 20 CT 5043. Um, he was arrested for attaching a tag on a sign and no valid driver's license. Mr. Uh, Matos, do you want to waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor. I'll appoint the public defender to represent him. I'm going to release him on his own recognizance at this time. He's not to drive without a valid driver's license. And then what about Adrian Harris? Medical, Your Honor. Adrian Harris. That's 20MM5191. Ms. Harris is being arraigned for the offense of resisting officer without violence. Mr. Matos, do you want to enter a plea of not guilty and waive the arraignment? Yes, Your Honor. That's going to be Division 63, pretrial conference, September 24th at 8.30 a.m. in courtroom 4D. Natasha Stewart? Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. You are here in case number 20 MM 5055. This is your arraignment for the offenses of petty theft, resisting merchandise recovery, and resisting officer without violence. You are represented by the public defender. Mr. Matos, how would she like to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, we are not going back there to talk to the clients, so I would not know. Okay. Is there an offer for Ms. Stewart? Yes. Um, yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, 40 days with 40 days credit time served. Court costs, cost of investigation to Orlando Police Department, $52. Restitution to the 7-Eleven at 901 South Orange Blossom Trail for $31.74. And no return to the scene of the 7-Eleven at 901 South Orange Blossom Trail. All right. Ms. Stewart, did you want to accept that offer, ma'am? Yes, I do. All right. Did you have a chance to read the plea form before court this morning? Yes, I did. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, I don't. Are you on probation? No. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea uh, may result in your deportation? Yes, I do. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or um, 
medication that no. would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No. All right, I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty as to each count, sentence you to 40 days in jail with credit for 40 days time served. Those will run concurrent to one another. You will have to pay court costs, including the cost investigation to the Orlando Police Department in the amount of $52, also restitution in the amount of $31.74 to the 7-Eleven, and you're also not to return to the 7-Eleven. Okay, I will not. Oh, um, yes. Have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court, ma'am. Yes, Thank okay. you. Okay. The amount of restitution was thirty-one dollars and seventy-four cents. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. Good morning. Your name? Dwayne Summers. Mr. Summers, this is twenty CO three zero eight. Your arraignment for the offense of open container. Did you want to enter a plea to this case, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did you read the plea form before court? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions at all about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. No? No, ma'am. All right. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will result in your deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right. I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to one day in jail with credit for one day time served. You'll have to pay court costs. Those will be due by August 18th of 2021. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right, thank you. Thank you. You're on the next on the list, Kristen Figueroa, medical. Thank you. And we took care of that with Mr. Blankner earlier. Good morning. Tell me your name. Alexi Roth Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you are here for an out of county plea out of Seminole County in case number 20 MM 1472. It's my understanding, uh, Mr. Wilson, that you would like to withdraw your previously entered plea of not guilty and enter a plea of no contest to the offense of resisting officer without violence. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And it, the uh, negotiated agreement approved by Judge Rex Seidler is an adjudication of guilt, 30 days in jail with credit for time served. All cost of prosecution and defense and court costs will be reduced to a judgment. Is that your understanding? Yes, ma'am. All right, sir. Did you read the plea form before court? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, I'm not. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right, I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 30 days in jail. Do you know how many days he has here? 49. How many? 49. 31. 49. 41. So I'm going to sentence you to 41 days. 49. 49. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't hear. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, I'm going to sentence you to 49 days in jail with credit for 49 days time served. You will have to pay court costs. Those, um, along with your cost of prosecution and cost of defense, as I stated, those will all be reduced to a judgment. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Good afternoon. My name is Rashid Okara Bradley. Mr. Bradley, you are here in 20 MM 5981. You were arrested for disorderly conduct at a public establishment and assault. There is probable cause. I will appoint a public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with the victims. You are not to return to the 
seen, you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Bond on count one is 500, bond on count two is 100. I am revoking the bonds in 20 CF 7413 and 19 CF 807. Those are going to be set at none, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, your name? Oh, hello, your honor. Biscardi Xavier. Mr. Xavier, you are here in case number 20 MM6005. You were arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. There is probable cause. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond um, is going to be $500. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms. And in 19 CF 13947, I'm revoking your bond. That will be set at nine. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, next on the list is Tiffany Parson. None of help. Mr. Machos, I will appoint your office to represent her. Do you want to wait for appearance? Yes, Your Honor. That's 20 MM 5995. She was arrested for trespass on property after warning. There is probable cause. The public defender is appointed. She's not to return to the Sunrail station, and I am going to release her on her own recognizance. Good, uh, good morning, your name? Evan Riddle. Mr. Riddle, you're here in 20 MM 5982. You were arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Ms. Fusco, do you have an offer for Mr. Riddle? Adjudication of guilt, three days with credit for time served, court costs. Mr. Riddle, did you want to accept the offer? Yes. Did you read the plea form before court? Please read the plea form and then let me know if you have any questions about any of the rights on the form, sir. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in jail. You have credit for two days time served. You will have to pay court costs. Those are going to be due by August 18th of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Thank you. Judge, are you taking any action on the outcome? Oh, no, I'm not. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Uh, Chad Zarni. Mr. Zarni, you are here in case number 20MM3394. You were arrested for failing to appear for court on the charge of petty theft. Mr. Zarni, did you want to resolve your case today? Yes, I do, Your Honor, but I was never, I was incarcerated for like five or six days and then just let go. I had never received any paperwork or nothing, and I've been in an adult rehabilitation center ever since until last week, and I never okay. even knew there was a warrant for it. Okay. Ms. Fusco, do you have an offer? Um, no, it looks like he has a couple prior convictions, Your Honor. Ms. Fusco, this case, the state's already filed an information on it. Okay, I'll defer to the court. Can you look to see if there's any restitution or anything that I need to include or cost of investigation? Um, I can look that up if you'd like.
like the merchandise was recovered, um, the calculator and the beer. The cop took a photo of the items and the receipt and placed them in the cabinet. Do you see any cost of investigation? We may want to reserve restitution. A lot of the businesses are telling me now they can't resell the items. I guess this was from a, a while back, though. All right, so you don't have a copy of what the restitution would be in the file? This is from May. Okay, so the dollar amount was $62.97. And then the city of Orlando. All right, well, I'll order and reserve for 30 days. Is there a cost of investigation? The cost of investigation, Your Honor, is $124 to the Orlando Police Department. Thank you. Mr. Zarni, if you were to enter a plea, you would be adjudicated guilty, sentenced to eight days in jail. You have credit for eight days time served. You have to pay court costs, which would include $124 cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department. I would order restitution and reserve as to the amount and allow the state 30 days to provide that information. Did you want to accept the offer? Sure, sure, yes. All right, sir, did you, did you read the plea form? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? This would release me and I would owe you $124. No, you owe a lot more than that. You owe court costs. The co that's just the cost for investigation. But I'm asking you if you have any questions no, about what's no, on the plea form, sir. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No. I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to eight days in jail. You have credit for eight days time served. You are uh, going to have to pay court costs, which are going to include the cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department in the amount of $124. I will order and reserve restitution for 30 days as to the amount. You have uh, 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Good morning, Natalie Rodriguez. Ma'am, this is 17MM8999. You were arrested for failing to appear related to the offense of petty theft. Ms. Fusco, do you have an offer? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Can you give me the name again? Rodriguez. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The name again? Natalie Rodriguez. 17 MM 8999. Miss Rodriguez, did you want to enter a plea to your case today? Um, not guilty. You want to you want to maintain a not guilty plea? Um, yeah, because this charge, it was supposed to be dropped as, um... Okay, thank you, ma'am. No problem, ma'am. Your bond will remain at none. Thank you. Do you want it? Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Is Wendy Howard. Miss Howard, you are here in case number... 19 CT 717. It is alleged that you have violated your probation by committing a new law offense. Yes. At this time, your bond is $5,000, or if you wanted to enter a plea to violating your probation or an admission, it would be 120 days in the Orange County Jail. What would you like to do? I'd rather have the bond. Okay, ma'am. Your bond is $5,000. You need to report to probation within 24 hours of your release from the jail, and I'm not going to take any action on the other cases. Oh, I report back to probation? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good morning, sir. Your name? Uh, Joseph Lee Conyers. Your Mr. Conyers, you're here in 20 MO 849. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. There's probable cause. Is there an offer for Mr. Conyers? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, two days with two days credit time served. Court cost. Thank you. Mr. Conyers, did you want to enter a plea, sir? Um, yes, ma'am. All right. Did you read the plea form? Yes, ma'am, I did. Do you have any questions about any of the rights? Uh, no, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? Uh, no, ma'am. I haven't taken no drugs. Okay. I will accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You will have to pay court costs, which will be due by August 18th of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sir, good morning. Your name? Michael Quick. Mr. Quick, you're here in 20 MO 850. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. There is probable cause. Is there an offer for Mr. Quick? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, court cost. The credit for time served offer, Mr. Quick, did you want to accept the offer? Yes, ma'am. Did you read the plea form before court? Yes. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No. Are you on probation? No. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You will have to pay court costs, which will be due by August 18th of 2021. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Matos, were you going to um, reserve Mr. Cannon's right to have the full hearing downtown? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Good morning. Or, yes, your name? Matthew Cannon. Mr. Cannon, this is 20 CF 9757. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for kidnapping, robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, grand theft of a firearm, and petty theft second degree. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Sir, at this time, your bond is going to remain at none on counts one and two, 2,500 on count three, 2,500 on count four, and 250 on count five. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms, sir. Your attorney is going to speak with you about your bond hearing, and they'll be re they will be scheduling that um, within a reasonable amount of time, and you'll have that entire hearing downtown, sir. Oh, wow. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Your name? David Cates. Mr. Cates, this is 20 CF 9904. You were arrested for driving with license suspended as a habitual offender. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been trying to, uh, I've been waiting on a bed to open up in rehab for um, for myself to get off the drugs. And okay. I was wondering if I could be put in, in part of some of the sentencing and stuff. That's something you'll ha definitely have to talk to your lawyer about. I'm, I'm not gonna enter, you're not gonna enter a plea here today, so I can't sentence you to anything, but that's certainly something you can talk to your lawyer about as something that may be part of a resolution down the road. Okay, and, and okay. I also have two holds from somewhere that I'm not sure what's the, what I have holds on. Is there any way of okay. finding out why I have a hold? Just give me one second, okay? Just, he just has a DNA hold. 
Okay. That's it. It's just a DNA hold, sir. What is that? They're, are they going to come swab him? Yes. They'll come swab you before you're released. Oh, so uh, that's all I got to do is... Okay. All right. Well, there's two of them. They says I'm the slows holds on, my, on me. I only see the one on my sheet here. I just have one, the one detainer. Okay. All right. Your bond's $500, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Tyrese Tyrone Davenport. Mr. Davenport, this is 20 CF 9934. You were arrested for possession of ammunition by convicted felon, possession of firearm by convicted felon, possession of a weapon in the commission of a felony, grand theft of a motor vehicle, and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. Yes, ma'am. There is probable cause. I am going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Yes, ma'am. Your bond on count one is going to be $2,500. Bond on count two, three, and four will be 150. Count five will be 100. You also have 20 CT 5051 where you were um, arrested for driving with uh, a suspended license. There's yes. probable cause for that offense, sir. Yes, ma'am. And your bond will be $100. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. you. Have a nice day. You too, sir. Good morning, your name? Good morning, William Furtick. Sir, you're here in 20 CF 9798. You were arrested for possession of cocaine pursuant to a probable cause capius. The state has filed a one count information charging you with possession of cocaine. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $500. Is there any way I can plead out today, ma'am? This, this, I, um, this was, they've had this charge for seven months. I've been in jail for seven months and then they waited for a week before I was to get out to, to put this on me. Um, so I understand Mr. Fairtick, I can't take a plea to a felony at an initial appearance. So that's something you're gonna have to resolve on a later date. Um, that's crazy. So you're gonna have to just resolve it down the road. All right, thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Harlena Furlow. Ms. Furlow, this is 20 CF 9942. You were arrested for possession of MDMA and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription, and I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Good morning, your name? This is Sandra Ganaway. Ms. Ganaway, this is 20 CF 9905. You were arrested for possession of fentanyl. Yes. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. What does that mean? Thank you, ma'am. What does that mean? Good morning, your name? Matisse Gray. Mr. Gray, you are here in 20 CF 9940. You were arrested for possession of MDMA. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond, sir, is going to be $500. You're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. I'm not gonna take any action on the other case, on the out on bond case. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Randy Grimes. Ms. Grimes, you're here in 20 CF 2259. You failed to appear for court 
on August 11th of this year. Your bond on count one is 1500. Your bond on count two is 100. I'm not taking any action on the out on bond case. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're next on the list, Ica. Ica Hager, QAQ Court. Okay. That's 20 CF 8444. Mr. Harker refused to attend court. I'll find a waiver of his appearance. I'll appoint the public defender. He was arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for fleeing and attempting to elude and driving while license suspended or revoked as a habitual offender. He's not to drive without a valid driver's license. Bond on count one is 2,500. Bond on count two is 150. Good afternoon, your name? Michael Daniel Henderson. Mr. Henderson, you are here, sir, in case number 20 CF 9924. You were arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the Dollar General. Your bond is $500, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, your name? Um, hi, um. Hi, I was trying to. Hi, ma'am. My name is Ariel Brigham. I'm sorry. I was trying to when I first got here. I was trying to. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. I don't, I didn't, I don't know what your name is. Tell me your name. It's Ariel Brigham. That's not my name. I was trying to tell the jail that. I was trying to tell them that I, I am sorry. It was my mistake that I end up using the wrong name. The only reason why I did it because I was scared because I just got into an altercation, a battery. I got into a battery fighting this girl and I didn't think, I thought the police was called on me, but the police was not. So when the police- Okay, asked so me, you were arrested under the name Kawante Law? Yes, ma'am. And my okay. name, my real name is Ariel Brigham. My, um, my birthday is, April 4th, 1996. My social is 258. Okay, well, ma'am, you, ma ma you don't need to put that on the, on the I'm record. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. You'll be able to talk with your lawyer about that. That's okay. I'm sorry. This is case number 20 CF 9935. You were arrested for petty theft. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. You're not to return to the Walmart. Your bond is $500. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Montgomery bondage warrant. Thank you. How about Raja Nasser or Nasser? No, ma'am, that's not me. I, I didn't think it was. I just I'm asking where that person is. <laughs> Did we pass by him, Your Honor? Sure. Are you Mr. Peterson? No. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Peterson, you're here in case number 20 CF 9790. You were arrested for burglary of an unoccupied dwelling and criminal mischief. This was pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you on both your cases this morning. And in 20 MM 6001, you were arrested for resisting officer without violence and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. Yes, ma'am. I was. There's uh, probable cause for that of those offenses as well. I'm going to place you on pretrial release in that case. In the 20 CF 9790, 
Your bond on count one is going to be $1,500. Bond on count two is gonna be $150. I'll also place you on pretrial release in that case. And you are not to return to the scene. You are not to have any contact with the victim. You're not to possess any weapons or firearms, sir. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Roger Nasser. There it is. Mr. Nasser, you are here in 20 CF 9938. You were arrested for possession of a firearm or ammunition by a convicted felon. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Bond, in that case, will be $1,500. Actually, bond will remain at $4,000 in that case. And then I'm revoking the bond in 20 CF 6743. That will be set at none. Thank you, sir. You're on the next on the list. Ramos. Ramos Gonzalez, behavior. Okay, I'm going to find a waiver of... Mr. Uh, Ramos Gonzalez's appearance based upon his inability to come to court due to his behavior in 20 CF 3374. He was arrested pursuant to a KPS for failing to appear in court. Bond on count one is 1,000. Bond on count two, three, and four is 100. He also has 20 CF 9921, where he was arrested for possession of fentanyl, possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams. Bond is a thousand on count one and one hundred on count two. Next on the list, Your Honor, C. Raymond. He refused court. I'm going to find a waiver of Mr. Seeley's appearance based upon his refusal to come to court. He was arrested in 20 CF 9894 for possession of MDMA, possession of heroin, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent him. Bond on count one is 1,000, on count two, 150. Three and four will be 100. I'm gonna revoke the bond in 20 MM 5541. That will be set at none. Good afternoon, are you Mr. Wood? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Wood, this is 19 CF 15232. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for burglary of a dwelling. The state has filed a one count information charging you with that offense. Your bond, sir, is going to be $2,500. You're not to return to the scene or have any contact with the victim. Thank you. Good morning, your name? My name is Joseph Danko. Sir, you're here in 20 CF 186. It is alleged that you have violated your probation by using methamphetamine and that you had hostile contact with the victim or the victim's family and that you failed to follow the instructions given to you by probation by not attending the no abuse class. Your bond is set at none. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're going to see Judge Whitehead in the next seven to 10 days, sir. Thank you. Good morning, are you Mr. Swamy? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you're here in 18 CF 16156. It is alleged that you have violated your probation in that case, as well as 18 CF 15424, by committing the new law offense of aggravated assault domestic violence in case number 20 CF 9870 and 20 CF 9869. 
There's probable cause for the violations of probation, sir. Your bond in both of those cases will be set at none. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You're going to see Judge Whitehead in the next seven to 10 days. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Joseph Denson. Mr. Denson, you are here for an out of county writ from Duval County. The purge amount is $750. Are you able to pay the purge? No, ma'am. Um, can I say something about the writ? Sure. Um, we've been oh, we've been going through this for about three years. They keep putting writs out for me, but I have a letter of protection because I'm on Social Security and I don't work, but I have a lawsuit with Win Dixie and they gave him a letter of protection and every time they keep getting me and taking me back to Jacksonville. They letting me go because of the letter of protection. And I was okay. trying to tell the officer that last night because they got me in Alachua County last year for the same thing. They got me in Duval a year before that. And now it came up again in April. And the judge said it's because of the computer that keeps kicking it out. But Okay. So that's something that, I mean, all I can really tell you about that is to go to the Department of Revenue because that's who... Um, is in charge of child support. Yes, ma'am. They, the they have the letter of protection and everything. Um, and I, I've been on Social Security for a year now. Right. And I can imagine how frustrating that is, um, Mr. Dunson. So today I'm going to um, get a court date for you. I'm going to email the folks in Duval County to let them know that you've been picked up on this writ. Let them know what you said. They'll give me a court date and then you'll be released once I get the court date. Make sure you go to that court date. Again, I know you've explained that you've already given everyone this paperwork, but maybe um, this time it'll get sorted out. Please, ma'am, please. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Christine Marie Pena. Ms. Pena, you are here in uh, out of county case out of Flagler County. Yeah, which I, I, I didn't know I had a failure to appear, so. Okay, so yes, at this time, ma'am, your bond is set at none. Okay. Um, we will reach out to Duval County to see if they'd like to make any modifications to your bond or release conditions. I will appoint the public defender to represent you here in Orange County to okay. help you coordinate with Duval County or with Flagler, Flagler County. Yeah. Once I hear back from Flagler County, we will bring you back to court to let you know what uh, modifications are to be made, if any. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Your name? Alberto Vargas. Mr. Vargas, you're here for an out-of-county warrant out of Seminole County related to a... A burglary. Burglary of an occupied structure and grand theft. At this time, your bond is set at none, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I will appoint the public defender here to represent you okay. to help you coordinate with Seminole County, sir. Okay. So, All right. So basically, I'm just waiting to get transferred, right? Well, right, but they're not transporting any of the inmates right now. That's why I have appointed oh. the public defender here in Orange County to help you to work on your case from 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 here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And then uh, court will be in recess.